The anticipation Earth. builds. Oh no. <laughs> Reeves lives. I'm trying my best. Oh no, no. Jordan oh! Love, quarterback, oh, no. Utah State. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh no. Walk it off. Oh, He's out. No. Bro. Well, good coons, pack your shit and get out of town, okay? Because everyone who's a Packers fan fucking hates you right now, pal. If you're a Packers fan, you know where that guy lives. Show up and pitch for it. Oh, my God. Jeez. Maybe throw a couple bricks or rocks. No, 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 no. You don't. Let him know long. we're not fucking happy about this, okay? <laughs> hey, Mel, you were one game away from the Super Bowl last year. What up, what up, what up, what up, Houston, round one of the draft is done, and thank God the Texans did not trade into the first round. I don't think anyone saw a scenario where the Texans uh, traded into the first round and didn't give up a player. Listen, when it comes to the current players that we have on this team, we can't afford to give up anymore. You know, yesterday I had a funny, funny amount of events. Uh, it was about to be 6 p.m. I'm on Madden. I'm fully hyped for for the draft. Rumors have just came out that the Texans wanted to move into the first round. Small squeeze by Bill O'Brien. Uh, were they really though? Because we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll discuss it. Um, and man, my lights freaking go out. We have an outage in the neighborhood. So uh, we get a message, we get in contact with Centerpoint, we get a message saying that we won't have lights until 8.30 that evening. So I'm thinking, man, 8.30, man, we don't know how, how fast or how rapid the picks are gonna, are gonna occur here in the draft. So I wasn't too sure, you know, with the time given of repair, would I be able to, uh, you know, actually react to it on the big screen. Um, and you know, the, the good thing is obviously the Texans didn't, didn't actually do the, do the move. Uh, the bad thing is my lights didn't come on until like nine something. So like around, I want to say like 8.15, we were like, man, let's get out of here. Uh, phones are dying and stuff like that. So, you know, I was watching uh, the draft on my phone with ESPN, but it was just draining my battery. So uh, just went for a drive, man. Went and got the kids some dinner. Um, went for myself to get comfort food uh that i thought i was gonna regret today but i don't regret uh went to raising cane yeah man let's get right into the nitty-gritty of the draft there were i i think for the most part it was it was really expected some of the players that went to me the draft actually felt pretty beautiful as far as who fell to the second round for the texas they got plenty of choices at the 40th pick but i truly believe they're going to do exactly what I've been hearing all along, and that is they will trade down from the 8th spot in the second round to anywhere between the 12th and the 18th uh, spot. Now, I know that uh, prior to the draft, they had um, calls from Dallas they had taken and, and calls from the Eagles they had taken, but based on some of the moves from last night, I don't see those two still being on the table. Uh, maybe the Cowboys is still there because they ended up with C.D. Lamb, however that happened. Um, but uh, I know for sure, I think the Eagles uh, have done what they needed to do. So I'm not too sure that they'll trade up. But either way, the Eagles were far down in the second round, so I'm not too mad about that. But the one team that I do know called the day of the draft is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, man, who are wanting to switch um, their pick, which is the 45th pick, to our pick in the 40th pick. And then give us their third round pick to move up. Expect, I would say, expect a lot of running backs to start falling in this second round. There was a lot of running. There was only one running back taken. It was. I'm pretty sure it wasn't the running back that everyone expected. But I tell you this much: the running back Hillier from LSU that the Chiefs took is a running back that's gonna cause us problems. One, because every enemy will know how to use this running back better than Bill O'Brien will know how to use David Johnson. Which tells me two things. If you don't have the front line where it needs to be, 
For instance, in my eyes, if you would have resigned Reader, you still would have needed help with this pick with the Chiefs. So now that they've lost Reader, they got I feel like they got to double up inside uh, or or one inside and one you know on the outside. So that this is why I say I'm very very comfortable with with knowing that the Texans will trade down because they got to accumulate more picks and because of the fact that they didn't trade up. And so much value fell to them. They got to maximize this draft. Now, let's get into some of the picks from yesterday, man. Off the bat, man, the Bengals get in Joe Burrow. I mean, did you really need to take that long to choose that? Chase Young to the Redskins. Jeff Okuda to the Lions. Man, Jeff Okuda is a great corner. I just don't see uh, Matt Patricia uh, maximizing him. He might not be shining until a new head coach is in Detroit. Uh, the Giants, man, they needed protection, man. So they went ahead and got Andrew Thomas. I think everyone was talking about how much of a surprise that was because there were other uh, better defensive tackles, offensive tackles, especially with his balancing. Uh, fifth pick, man, very expected. Tua to Miami. Uh, I predicted this on the sauce yesterday that I believe that the Texans will be playing the Dolphins in the wild card. So, hey, if you want to write that down and come, uh, come, come claim it later, uh, feel free to do so, man. The, the Chargers got their quarterback. They got Justin Herbert. Not so, not too sure about how much that will pay off. Um, you know, it's a defensive coach there, and unless you can get a coach that can develop him in there, you know, unless I really don't see him succeeding into there. Maybe get a new coach in there. Uh, Carolina, man, they went with a DT from Auburn, Derek Brown. I think people were shocked about that one as well. But I think the biggest save for the Texans came in the eighth pick when Arizona Cardinals took Isaiah Simmons, man. Because when I was watching the, the, the draft, I was like, yo, Simmons just kept dropping and kept dropping. And I'm thinking to myself, the Jacksonville Jaguars are freaking going to get Isaiah Simmons. And Deshaun will never be able to scramble again. Uh, but man... Thankfully, that did not happen. Arizona Cardinals selected Isaiah Simmons. Hell of a player, man. Arizona is really, really building. And the way that they're building and the and the weapons that they're they're putting together, man, it's going to be hard to compete with them. So we'll see, you know, how good they do in the season. Browns obviously needed a tackle with uh, some of their tackles retiring. So they went ahead and got one. Jets also needed a tackle. So they got Beckton uh, from Louisville. Um, and then the Raiders, man, they went Henry Ruggs, wide receiver, want to get speed. They talked about so much about the speed and competing with the Chiefs. I think the Texans really set that tone when they were willing to trade with DeAndre Hopkins because according to Bill O'Brien, he wants to get faster. So they went and got out Brandon Cooks, they went and got Randall Cobb, uh, you know, they keep Still, they keep Fuller, they keep QT. Everyone's just trying to get on speed, man. It's hard, I guess. To draft that many corners in the draft, so no, why, why not just add to the weapons that you already have on the wide receiver side? Tampa Bay, man, traded up the, with San Francisco, man, and went and got got themselves the old lineman that they needed to protect Tom Brady. Uh, I think people saw that coming. Uh, they really just swapped. Uh, they really just swapped. San Francisco just swapped down one, so that's very interesting. I don't think uh, I recall exactly what Tampa Bay gave up. Uh, but yeah, man, I think it was just a swap and maybe swap and maybe the second or fourth, but, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure about that one. Then the Broncos went and got Jerry Judy, man. Hell of a pick, I think, for the Broncos. I don't think Jerry, I didn't expect Jerry Judy to fall that, that far for them, but hell of a pick for them, man. Uh, they definitely need a, a, a wide receiver, uh, to go with, um, to go with that, that team. Uh, for the 16th pick, man, uh, the Falcons, man, got A.J. Terrell from Clemson. Good good corner. So, hey, man, they lost the corner, replaced the corner. Cowboys, man, land C.D. Lamb. That, that to me, uh, is it's a good thing. I hope they maximize it because I honestly think about it is that they already paid Amari Cooper, so they're going to keep Amari Cooper. But I could definitely see how if Amari Cooper doesn't produce, they'll find and start finding ways to trade him. Uh, but C.D. Lamb, man, I think it's going to be great for them. So, That'll be interesting saying. And then Miami Dolphins, man, again, picking. Uh, went ahead and went with a lineman, Austin Jackson. I think that was also a surprise because a lot of people felt like his balancing was not that great. And there's other teams out there. Then the Raiders at the 19th, man, Damon, uh, Damon Arnett, man. Hell of a pick. Hell of a pick for them. Uh, offensive uh, lineman there. And, man, 
That's going to be good for them. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars, man, went and cave on uh, Shazon. Look, there was rumors that they wanted to trade uh, Yanakwe, uh to the Raiders. I'm not too sure that that happened because I'm pretty sure the Jags wanted a first-round pick. I just don't see Yanni playing for them this year. So, hey, you know, for people saying, oh, we got Yanni on one side, we got Shazon on the other side, I don't think we're they're going to see that past preseason. I'm pretty sure that guy is pretty much out of the building. They'll probably get a second or a third for uh, for Yannick. Uh, 21st pick, man, the Eagles went Jalen Rager, man. Went speed. Uh, went speed, man. And uh, I, I get it, man. Wentz probably needs uh, to be able to, to throw to somebody that can get open uh, and not take so long to wait for, for a play to develop. So I can see the, the thought around that. The Vikings went and selected Justin Jefferson. Hey, man, they needed a wide receiver. They just let Diggs go. So hell of a pick for them. And then... Very interesting. Patriots obviously always trade out, but there was rumors that the Patriots wanted to get a QB. Uh, I really think that, um, you know, they, they, I guess, decided that the quarterbacks that were left were not the ones that they wanted. So they went ahead and traded out of the first round. And the Chargers traded in and got Kenneth Murray, linebacker from Oklahoma. Hell of a player, man. I really hadn't studied him, but just looking at that one minute highlight that they were showing, the dude was breaking, uh, just breaking um, through players, man, in traffic just to get to the to the running back. And I honestly have not seen that from a linebacker. Most linebackers are they're trying to like you know find their way out of the block, but this dude is just straight up swiping and and just getting to it. And that uh, that's gonna be good for them um, for the Chargers. New Orleans Saints, man, needed a, a center, I guess, and they got Caesar Reese. I think that surprised a couple of people. And then the San Francisco 49ers traded back into the first round, man. Traded uh, picks with, with the Vikings and got Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk, man. This makes them fast, man. And look, for them, this is the speed. I, I'm, I, I'm going to say that probably Garoppolo agrees that they need it. You know, when Garoppolo throws that ball to Sanders and Sanders, you know, it's overthrown. I would say that it, to me, it was overthrown. But the way they're looking at it is probably like, if we had Brandon Ayuk, he would have caught that. Maybe so, maybe not. But look, they're not giving up on, on this window that they have. They've already paid their QB, so, you know, they got to build through the... Uh, 26 pick, man. Everyone's surprised, man. Packers <laughs> select Jordan Love, man. I was watching... Uh, I can't remember his name, but it used to be um, Pat McAfee's uh, show on YouTube, man. They were making fun. Uh, they had, like, a fake Adam Scheffler uh, reacting to the picks, and... He's actually, the guy that was impersonating him is actually a true Packers fan. So uh, when he's there, they were making fun of this pick with Jordan Love, man. But that, to me, is surprising for a quarterback. Look, I get it on both sides, right? Like, Aaron Rodgers is getting old. We don't know how many more injuries he'll take. Um, to me, there was already tension between him and LaFleur because LaFleur runs a certain offense that it's not really slinging it like Rodgers want, but... You know, slinging for Rodgers lately have not done him any good. So I could, I could see how Malafro is trying to tell him, you know, this is the best way to keep you upright and healthy. Uh, but when you draft the QB after you've given him a contract, that to, that to me would be like us also drafting the QB here in the second at the top of the 40 when we have Deshaun and we're about to pay him. Like to me, that's very identical because like contract wise, bro, what are you doing, right? But I understand if they think that uh, Aaron Rodgers is going to bring up Jordan Love. I just don't think that Jordan Love is really going to take lessons from Aaron Rodgers. And they made Jordan Love feel so uncomfortable when they were when they asked him about what he thought about Aaron Rodgers being there already. And he's like, you know, like he felt like, like you could tell that he didn't want to say it. But out of respect, he said, you know, I'm I want I can learn so much from Aaron Rodgers. He's the goal, whatever. Honestly, if I feel like they drafted me and they've been telling me that I'm the man for the job, I straight up would have been like, yo, man, move around. But anyway, that's just me. Uh, man, and it's Seattle, man. Hell of a pick, man. Jordan Brooks, linebacker from Texas Tech. You know, they addressed there. I'm surprised they didn't, they didn't address going up front, but maybe they feel like they can get them in the second round. Then the Ravens did what I freaking hate, bro. They drafted Patrick Queen. And I just kept seeing Patrick Queen fall, and I'm like, man, I knew that he was mocked to the to the Ravens, but I was really hoping that they they, they wouldn't take him and they would fall um, because I thought that if there was anyone that Texas was going to trade up for, it was Patrick Queen 
or a safety that they wanted. But it is obvious that maybe the safety that they want already fell. Uh, and Patrick Queen was taken by the Ravens. So, yeah. Uh, then the Titans went and got Isaiah Wilson. Um, they say that he's very raw from the videotape that I saw. They, um, the dude's very raw, so we'll see how Tennessee uses him. Uh, but I think JJ Watt is going to have a field day with that right tackle. Then Miami Dolphins uh, got that the corner from Auburn, uh, Noah Ibigno, Ibignoen. Uh, I saw his tape. I, I liked him. I don't, I don't know if he was a first round to me, but hey, when you see a corner that you like, I guess... Go and get them. There's a lot of corners flying out um, the first round. So, yeah. Then the Vikings got Jeff Gladney from TCU. And then the Chiefs did what I feel like is going to force uh, the Texans' hands, which is got Clyde Edwards Hellier. Man, he's a, he's a tough runner, man. Catches off the backfield just, just like David Johnson does, except that he doesn't come with the injuries that David Johnson does. Now, the only thing I would say, there's a lot, a lot of problems with LSU running backs. We've seen it ourselves by getting Alfred Blue. I think we had a, a, another guy that kind of sounds familiar to Hilliard um, that we drafted from there as well that didn't pay out. Uh, look at Leonard Fournette. Didn't work out with the Jags. Not too sure how the trade is going to work there and where he goes, depending on that. He might do good. He might not do good. He's obviously has had bad attitude. They say he's late to practices, etc. So I'm not sure too much of the working habits with Elliot. I'm not going to put that on him. But I do know that LSU running backs don't have the best uh, report out there, right? So uh, it'll be interesting to see. But man, if, if there's anyone that could do it, it's definitely a a Andy Reid and Eric Benemy to put that together. And look, man, just, just re from remembering what we had to do to cover their tight ends and their wide receivers, trust me. Trust me when I say that we have to, have to, have to solve the problem up front. You got to get pressure on, on freaking Mahomes. If you don't get pressure on Mahomes, he's going to have all day to see if his receivers get open downfield. And if they don't, he's just going to dump it right there to Hellier. And we're going to get eaten alive, bro. Because one, McKinney can't cover for long. There's, there's sparks here and there. And Cunningham can't do the work all freaking day, which is another reason why I felt like Patrick Queen to us would have been a major, major thing. But hey, look, there's still a couple of left uh, good linebackers out there. Uh, actually, that's exactly what I wanted to get into. So then just looking at what's left, man, uh, as far as what I think we would draft. Look, there's Xavier McKinney, the uh, safety from Alabama. I don't think the Texans are interested in him. But they're interested in this guy, Ross Blacklock, TCU, defensive tackle. They're interested in this guy, Antonio Winfield, safety from Minnesota. They're interested in this guy, AJ Esponza from Iowa. They're interested in this guy, Utah Gross Matos from Penn State, Grant Delpit from LSU, Zach Bond from Wisconsin. Uh, you got Trayvon Diggs from Alabama, corner, Justin um, uh, Ambuke, defensive tackle, Jordan Elliott, Jalen Johnson, corner. So, I mean, Denzel Mims, if they, they want to add more speed, <laughs> Neville Gilmore, I mean, you definitely have so many options, which is why I say that this draft felt beautiful, except for Patrick Queen not falling. Everything else I felt uh, 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 was quite, quite the way that, that it should fall for the Texans. But I think this is a big if for every Texans fan. Will Bill O'Brien make the right move? You know, will he get the Laramie Tunsil of players that you want in this draft or when you get the Titus Howard. This is what I mean. Titus Howard was drafted to be the left tackle. He couldn't play left tackle. So what ended up happening? They tried him a left guard. That didn't work. They tried him a right tackle. That worked. But the left tackle was Matt Khalil. And what did they got to do? They got to replace Matt Khalil. So they had to do what they had to do to give up and get Laramie Tunsil. Had Titus Howard been a good left tackle, I don't think they go and do, uh, you know, the Laramie trade. These are the things that happen. And all ever since then has been a, a, a freaking snowfall effect on everything that we've done. On everything that we've done. Because now we got to pay Laramie Tunso, we got to pay Deshaun Watson. Had you just had to pay Deshaun Watson, I promise you they keep reader. I promise you they keep reader. I promise you that 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 DeAndre Hopkins' request for a raise might not make such an impact as he thought it would. All these things, to me, have put us in the position that we are today. 
And all I'm saying is, Bill O'Brien, please don't continue the trend of having to continue to put band-aids on shit that doesn't get done right the first time. Get it done the right the first time. Today is a beautiful day to trade down and still get beautiful value in the second round. If Tampa Bay is offering you five, down, five picks down, there's plenty of players that I just read that I feel will fall for us at 45. Take it and get your two-thirds because there's going to be plenty, plenty of talent. Listen, they got the fifth pick in the fourth round. So having a top pick in the third round and at the bottom of the third round and then another top pick in the fourth round is everything we would need in this draft. And I feel like it's exactly what the Texans need to rebuild this defense. That's just my spill.